a la volume, right? Top is vapor. So this is vapor, this is liquid. And you can see right here, we have calculated G, and we'll go through this. And you can see right now, G vapor is 5,800, 6,600 for the liquid. Which of the two states do we have? Vapor has this G, liquid has this G. Which of the two states do we have? Vapor. Vapor, the one whichever has the lowest G. Where is the vapor pressure? If we scroll down, you see the distance between the two. So remember, it's the purple column. Look at the purple, and look at what happens as I scroll down. 58, 66. 58, 60, OK, change source. 61, 66. 61, 66. 61, 66. 61, 66. See, they're coming closer together. 62, 67. 64, 67. 66, 67. Now they get closer. 66, 67. <coughs> 67, 89, 67, 91. Now they get close. And OK, look here. So right here, 67, 89, 67, 91. Next one, at pressure 3.2536, 6791, 6791. And then it flips. Higher pressures, now which has a lower G? If you look between here and here, which has a lower G? The bottom one. <coughs> at this point, it's this. So you can find the vapor pressure by whether to meet. I didn't put a G versus P graph here. I will create it in a minute. Let's create a graph of G versus P for that. It's not default. Default I have P versus V hat. And F is fugacity. Fugacity also shows vapor pressure here. By the way, the vapor pressure of fugacity, which we haven't talked about yet. But this is an important, this software is going to be very important for you to understand what fugacity is all about. But let's create P versus V hat. You should all know how to plot in Excel. So how am I, oh, and for convenience, one of the things you may wonder is why I'm repeating P all the time. Notice P is listed all the time. <laughs> the easiest way to plot in Excel without any hassle is if you have your X and Y axis on adjacent columns with the X axis on the left. So I repeated P to make the plotting very easily. So if I want V hat versus P, which is this diagrams, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, I would highlight those two plots, which is already what it is. If I wanted to have, though, P against H, enthalpy, I would highlight those two. Then I would show H on the y-axis and P on the x-axis. P against S, this two. P against G, this two. So let me highlight, actually, one for title, P versus G. Highlight those, and you can go manually, <coughs> Or if I can remember for that is control. Now there's a shortcut that goes all the way down. Maybe control shift. You can press the load big button. That's well. Control the load. I don't know that. Not control the load. Let's see what this. It's a new one. Yeah, that. Oh, no, it's not that one. That's okay. Control shift. Control shift. Control shift. That's it. Thank you. That's what I was trying to remember. Thank you, Dal. So highlight the two. Go to insert. Go to scatter chart. And because I have empty spaces. 
I have to do it manually, guys. Okay. I have to do it manually. <laughs> okay. So select all of them. Scroll down. All the way down. That's why I didn't work. I forgot about the blank spaces. All right. Now insert. There we go. Okay. <coughs> the one that changes just a little bit is liquid gym. The one that changes a lot is paper gym model. So, where, at, which is the vapor pressure when the two curves intersect? Below the vapor pressure, which jig has lower? Vapor is lower vapor pressure before jig. Below jig. Higher before. Vapor is the lower G below vapor pressure. Above vapor pressure, liquid is the lower vapor is the higher. So this is what the software does. One important thing, though, I want to point out here. What's the value? Suppose that I wanted to put G pressure close to zero. What happens to G? Look at that graph. What happens to G as the pressure decreases? What do you think happens to this number as I go? Negative. 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 It goes up. It's a G. And G goes to zero. It's very important. If I want to do any G path, because that's the ideal gas case, right? So G ideal gas case blows up. Okay, you see that? That's the issue of G. You can use it. And here I need it to go down to zero, and certainly I can find my vapor pressure this way. But there's a mathematical issue with G for some things we want to do in That's why fugacity was invented. Fugacity is, a, is in essence a recasting of G molar that makes that infinity disappear for a real gas. That's the whole reason of existence of you gas. It's that G molar blows up in the ideal gas case. Okay? More when we talk about you gas. Okay, so this software, how does this software work? Let's open the second software. First of all, from here we can see the program behind it. If you go to Have you all not been able to see it and run it? Carmen, are you running it? Yeah. Everybody in the laptop is running it, okay? Okay, we need to do something else. We need to, uh, yeah, we need to see also, see the program, go to options, go to customize ribbon, and check develop. It's the only thing hidden. The ability to code in VBA is the only thing hidden. I love it, Michael. Okay. So now, if you click Developer and select Macros, you see the program. If you click Edit, you see the program list. I wish I could make the font bigger, but you can see it in your own screen. Okay, so I'll walk you through this program because I do want you to understand what is behind it. But to understand what's behind it, let's go back to the class website and download PR program documentation. This explains what is behind and how this program was created. 
So it shows a little bit. I'm not sure if it has the very last iteration of it here or not, but an important addendum is this, and I want you to, let's look at this. If you recall, all those cubic equations of state can be expressed as a cubic equation in the compressibility factors in the C. I give you in lecture, I think for both Peng Robinson and SRK, what would be the factors? I think you have a cubic equation and gave you the coefficients as they appear, and they are also in your text. You have a full cubic equation, and of course, without loss of generality, you can divide by the coefficient of x cubed and have this term. So this is the equation that you typically have z cubed plus a z squared, I think, plus b. I don't know what coefficients it uses. We'll look in a minute in the product. OK, but you have three coefficients for the cubic equation. The first thing you do is you can recast it in a different form if you make certain transformations. So if you transform the variable to be y minus p over 3, a to be this, remember you have the p, q, and r coefficients that are defined here. So this is the p. So you change from x, from z will be changing to y variable. Then you go to this form, which has y squared coefficient 0. And in the code, I'm calling this a p inc and this b q inc. So any cubic equation, you can recast it in this form. And now you form something called a discriminant, which has this form. And if the discriminant can be positive or negative, and you have different number of solutions of the real solutions according to the sign of the discriminant. Yes? Um, how did you get x is equal to y minus? How did you? You define that transition. That you change variables. I'm changing from x to y. You can do that? Yeah, you can make any transformation of variables you want, yes. But how did you get that specific like, formula? Mm -hmm. Mathematicians have developed it. So oh, that's so all. have to worry about that. Okay. So you have the discriminant. And the discriminant is positive, then you have only one real root and two imaginary roots. What's the case? Discriminant positive is above or below. If I'm at the temperature that I can have the possibility of three roots, discriminant positive is when I have above here or below. Okay? And if the and here it gives you the calculation of the of the roots. Why? And then you can translate them into roots of x. Well, I don't care what the imaginary roots are, but here is the real thing. If the discriminant is 0, OK, that's the case. So that's exactly at the vapor pressure, but you'll never hit exactly. Here is the case for discriminant negative, where we have the three roots. It has this right up as a width. Involved, this is my handwriting. I wrote in the way that was actually coded. And then you can show that I can rewrite what they have. It's b greater than 0. So I can always write it as minus b. So I'm showing some manipulation. So I'm simplifying this plus minus. So I made this plus, mi plus minus disappear with some logic. So you have finally the result. So let's now go at the program. And we just understand what the problem is. So here, I hope you can read it, but you have your computers in front of you. So I give us again some constants, translates the temperature, the critical temperature into Kelvin, translates the critical pressure into Pascals, reads the eccentric factor. These are comments. This is how a visual basic program reads from Excel with the cells command. So here it reads from the spreadsheet where you manually entered the critical quantities and the molecular weight. And here we are reading the coefficients for CP star. And remember, 
that from the eccentric factor, Penn-Robinson and SRK was calculating a kappa, which is just a function of the eccentric factor. So I immediately translate the eccentric factor into a kappa. And remember, the capital B was a, para it was a parameter times R t critical over t critical, so this is calculated. These are things that don't change with temperature or pressure. These are th things that are fixed no matter what temperature you have. Then I'm reading the temperature, and I'm translating it into Kelvin. Now, the temperature is fixed. You select the temperature, it's fixed. Now we calculate all the parameters that depend strictly on temperature, that don't depend on pressure. And what parameters depend on temperature? The alpha. Remember, you have an alpha. Which, and from that alpha, you calculate the A. Remember, I had the 4.57. And we also calculate the derivative of A. And that is also expressed analytically in the textbook. So here's the derivative of A. What other things are only a function of temperature? The ideal gas and alpha. This is exactly what you calculated in your very first homework. The ideal gas enthalpy using the fact that it's zero at the reference temperature. Now, I differ from Unison that my H is zero in all cases doesn't include heat of formation. So if you to use this H, you would have to include heat of reaction. If you use the H that is in unison, the heat of formation are there, so you wouldn't need to add in solution and heat of reaction. So the, so the ideal gas enthalpy is completely calculated. Ideal gas entropy has a temperature dependent part and has also the ln P over P reference, right? So for the ideal gas, for S, the temperature independent part is only the ideal gas part. It's only the temperature part. So here is the S ideal temperature part. You did also in your homework where you integrate the CP star over T. So that's the result of integrating CP star over T. Finally, you read beginning and end pressures. Here is the row we start printing. So this is where the preliminaries, everything else depends on pressure, so we have to calculate within the loop. Because there'll be a loop that goes from the beginning pressure, beginning pressure, sorry, down here, beginning pressure to final pressure. We integrate from beginning pressure to final pressure. So this is a good way to immediately clear the results of the previous run very fast, instead of using a loop to clear. It's a VBA command, so immediately clear itself. And there's a big, here's where the big problem. Do while the pressure is less or equal to the ending pressure. And here are, okay, A cap and B cap are the capital A and the capital B that you had in the Penn Robinson, remember that depend on the A and on the B. So these are the conditions. And now you have the full cubic equation. And actually, I'll give you the reference in your text. You can see a table in the text where the parameters are given. So I'm using Q0, Q1, Q2 as the parameters. And this, uh, this is exactly what's in your text. And you could translate that to SRK, but given exam and things like that, I'm not assigning that. The one in which we make the quadratic coefficient zero is called the incomplete cubic. And remember, I showed you in the hard copy that I named the P inc and Q inc. So here we calculate the coefficients. After we calculate the coefficients of the full cubic equation of the compressibility factor, we have the coefficients of the incomplete. And now we calculate the discriminant, checking if we have one or three roots. If we have discriminant less than zero, that's the case of three. Calculate some temporary things. And then these are the equations for the y solutions that were 